Right, welcome back. Now I've put the hard drive in, you've got to do a couple of small um, tweaks and adjustments so that you can access it. Now it depends on what, you, what you're going to use it for. You might just well be accessing it from any computer in the house, in which case you don't really need to do anything else. That's you finished. Put the hard drive in, um, browse to one of your, uh, your folders, see if I can do one here my computer and then it's on the left hand side so it's ready here and then you can go in and do whatever you fancy or now what we can do is in this case what I use this um, hard drive for is an FTP server that collects images from the security cameras also use it as a media server um, which streams uh, the movies photos all over the house but it doesn't necessarily do it on a computer. So um, that kind of took care of itself. All I had to do was set up a password and that is pretty much it. I'll just go through a couple of the settings here anyway. Now, what really took time was creating an FTP server. Now, all this uh, hard drive is actually doing is storing footage from cameras or photos or stills, whatever from security cameras. Just like any FTP server, it's a storage device that can be located on a network or on an external network. So here we've got all the addresses for that. We've got just the network address, it's just ready share. So slash slash ready share on the address bar will take you to the router hard drive. The HTTP is through the browser. The, I'll just click on it, right click on it and it comes up like this. So I can, it's a different look to it. Um, it's exactly the same as the WNDR3700, but it just means you can access it in different ways. Uh, still need a password if you want to do any amendments to it. You can also see it from the outside world if you're on holiday or something and you fancy watching a film you've got, then you can just click on, you would have to enable it uh, for this one, and people could just Go and have a look. Um, FTP server, this is what I use now for my security cameras. And this is the FTP server upload, this one here. Okay, so here's my security camera. Rather than um, putting another RJ45 cable up to it and um, mucking about with it, trying to get it back into the Wi Fi for this new router. What I've done was I put two computers um, together beside each other. One was connected to my old 3700 and the new one was connected to the new 4700. So all I've done was I got the Wi-Fi settings, pressed scan, found my new one, connected to it, changed the password um, there, left all this the same. Once that was done, I pressed OK and then switched to the new router. And I went through, I've got three cameras, I went through them and done one after the other. That way you're not having to mess about. Um, it did take about three or four minutes per camera to, uh, to switch over. Right, now for setting up the FTP server, I went in here. This is my external IP address which is the one that uh, the internet or everybody else sees me on. This here is port 21 which is an FTP port but you have to um, port forward. So you have to go to advanced and go to advanced setup and then port forward. I'm not going to go into port forward, it's a whole different subject but um, that's the three ports that I was using. And I've also added the FTP uh, protocol as well. So the login of the router and password of the router. Now this is the um, address to put the, the photos. To find that, all I've done was here it's here. It tells me the address is here. So for 
I've already put in the, the external IP address which is this here that goes to the top it then goes to shares which is the it's the protocol for the, the router to tell it you want to send it to a hard drive at that point you then just do normal file paths and it's forward slashes as well um, and you press submit and then test and it will send a, a test uh, image to the router um, I have got a lot on FTP servers I'll put that on the screen now but all in all I've found this router pretty good um, I've had a good look around it now as well the only major difference I would say is it's a faster internal transfer speed um, it is obviously got an internal hard drive capability which is good but you've got to remember there's a hard drive in it because they are quite fragile um, it's just got a different user interface it's not an awful lot of difference to be honest but for £100 uh, you know it makes sense